the, uh, the industries we represent uh, accounts for 12 to 14 percent of Canada's GDP. Uh, and therefore, any money governments put into the trades have a substantial return on their investment. We're slightly different than uh, universities in, in terms of uh, we don't go to school and then do an internship. Uh, we go to school and return to the workforce uh, and, uh, and work for a period of time, then return to school again over a period of four, three, four, five years. Uh, we also do uh, post, what we call post -jour journeyman uh, training or endorsement training uh, after the fact, uh, depending on which trade that you belong to. I understand who I'm talking to uh, uh, or with today, and I need to say this right up front. Funding for the trade shouldn't be limited to bums and seats. Uh, as we recognize that 80% of the trade apprenticeship will come through experience uh, by direct mentoring on the job with journeymen. So for my answers to resonate with you, I thought it'd be best to re-put the question in a slightly different context so that you can better understand our needs. And that question would be, what role do we need the federal and provincial governments to play to adequately support trades and apprenticeship training in British Columbia? The federal government has really three primary roles in supporting trades and apprenticeship. Uh, the five-year census polls indicate a worker's age, trade, or job, and residence. Uh, we need to tap into these polls along with proposed major works and our technological uh, or material trends. Uh, the federal government can then better understand future needs for any worker classification and market that demand to the Canadian public so they can make better informed choices of the trade that they'd like to learn. The uh, point two, the, the continued endorsement of the Red Seal program provides consistency and a standard approach to accomplishing major works across Canada. Uh, and the demand for skilled trades established in 1952 and received by graduating apprentices since 1950, uh, 1959, uh, all major works in Canada, such as the Alberta oil sands, the Newfoundland's Hibernia project, or even the tens of billions of dollars that are being talked about today to rebuild the Canadian, Canadian naval fleet, uh, could not be achieved without out-of-province help. Uh, the administrative burden on having provincial standards would add further unnecessary cost to projects, creating uh, economic harm to the region and likely sacrifice the quality of the work, uh, as it may be built by varying provincial standards. Essentially, the Red Seal program is a key component to Canada's productivity and economic competitiveness. The Canadian Red Seal program is recognized globally as a success, which should be capitalized on by adding more and more job classifications to its roster. And my hope would be that province's best minds could get together to create a national standard for aircraft technicians uh, and automotive transmission technicians, for example, uh, as opposed to signing further internal trade deals, which seeks to lower standards. Uh, simply when a plane flies from British Columbia to Ontario as they cross those provincial borders, I don't think the, cha the, the changes to the plane should be dramatically made. Uh, there are, they should be all by the same standard. Labor and knowledge has always been a commodity and uh, those countries in the world with an emphasis on the education of its people will be able to sell our skill and abilities. Uh, and as to Dylan's point, our knowledge uh, abroad making our country wealthier and its citizenry more pertinent on the world stage. Uh, it also helps prepare for our own national extraction resources as the globe grows in its consumption and turns to those countries such as Canada with plenty to provide. So we can sell our knowledge base. We certainly don't have, I mean, I mean multinational corporations are, are moving around the world globally looking at cheap forms of labor. But what they can't do is find cheap forms of knowledge. So if we can provide a strong knowledge base uh, in terms of a, on a national platform, then we can sell those services abroad and become wealthier for it. The last item of significant importance from the federal government is also the first item on my list for the provincial government. And you can throw in municipal governments, uh, crown corporations, and institutions as well. And that is that all government works, essentially works paid for by the Canadian taxpayer, need to stipulate mandatory registered apprentices, uh, apprentice ratios, and mandatory red seal journeymen. Without the mandatory nature of this requirement, there will always be a percentage of unscrupulous contractors uh, in the construction industry willing to make, uh, take advantage of workers and customers. 
whether that comes in the simple form of upselling products to customers they really don't need uh, or taking advantage of employees based on a promise of an apprenticeship somewhere in the future. Taxpayers should feel comfortable that the work that they're paying for is being installed by professional and skilled trades workers. The most standard approach to ensuring that that is being done is by hiring Red Seal workers. And British Columbia is the only province today that doesn't require licensing or ticketing for all the trades. First time ever. To carry on with the same theme uh, with that, could our BC provincial government do, uh, do to improve upon the trades and apprenticeship system is to first understand what restructuring has gone over the past decade and what impact has had on the system. Uh, and for those that have not been around during that uh, period, I'd ask you to refer to the reams of information that was corresponded at that time because that would take a heck of a lot more than 10 minutes. The biggest difference I've noticed as a sponsor to over 350 apprentices on Vancouver Island is the increase of administrative work that the provincial apprenticeship counselors used to perform, which has now been offloaded to uh, one of my secretaries. Uh, they performed an essential service to the apprentices in the province, and I believe that the one shame in all of the restructuring was their dismissal. There was 130 odd apprenticeship counselors that were dismissed when the BC Liberals came into uh, government. Uh, the move towards slicing up or watering down the trades is simply a poor choice. We will all pay for it in the, in the future, as simply as I can put it. Solving a skilled trade shortage with semi -skilled, uh, a semi-skilled workforce is not the answer. Eight years or two generations of trades later, we haven't seen any improvement for all of these changes. What we have seen is a scathing Auditor General's report of a poor performing industry training authority with no concrete evidence that any of these changes benefit anyone it was clearly a mistake. Point four, and likely the most pertinent to uh, you here today, we need to ensure that the education system remain in appropriate industry stakeholder hands and remain public. That the education isn't sacrificed by one pilot project or another, institutions should not be put in the position of competing against each other for training dollars based on their creativity and scheduling. Curriculum and exams should be standardized with the goal of an interprovincial curriculum. This development must be funded by provincial governments and not be left up to the individual instructors. Curriculum must be up to date as the industry experiences its technological and operational changes. My point five, if for no other reason than from a consumer protection point of view, uh, we need to instill compulsory certification. The BC public should not have to wait until an elevator plummets 40 floors to the ground to hold an inquiry. They shouldn't have to wait until a school or hospital floor fails bringing down tons of concrete on our children due to shoddy work practices. Uh, then grieve on behalf of the families. We shouldn't have to wait until we perform another leaky condo investigation at the cost of British Columbians most important purchase. We need an ever increasing better standard, not a standard that offers us no protections at all. Uh, I would uh, like to end my comments with uh, sending out a, uh, a warm uh, and, and very important, uh, uh, pro uh, I would say, uh, speech of hope for the, uh, the folks down in Wisconsin uh, because, and at the Peace Arch today and across our borders because it is a very important fight. As, Tara uh, pointed out uh, that this is an attack on the middle class uh, by multinational corporations, uh, that there are f the 400, 400 Americans, uh, billionaires in the United States, do have uh, and hold more wealth than 155 million Americans, over half of their population. This is an attack on the middle class and we all have to be prepared for it because it is going around the world. And, uh, and I guess my last comment would be that, uh, and I like to make this o over and over again because it's a very important point uh, considering who I am and where I come from, the middle class was union made. Thank you.